if I'm thinking of uh, what it represents for me as a composer and as my fourth opera with Martin, it's a, a change, a quite substantial change from the previous ones. Um, it's for a smaller orchestra. The length is somewhat shorter than the previous two. The tone is different. And the form is very, very different. There's one main character who traverses the whole story and is in every scene. And it's a quest. And during that quest, she encounters a, a wide variety of people. So it's like a, a journey with one path going through it. But each destination on the way is absolutely different with very little connection between them. Or, or there's almost no thematic uh, uh, or light motives that, that are intentionally that represents a continuity. And so it's, um, it's unified by the fact that it's the same woman going to the path and searching for the same destination in each of the encounters that she has. But those five encounters are very, very contrasted with each other. And for all my operas and every role, every role, even the small ones, I've always met with the singers and I've always taken 20 pages of notes about their favorite notes, their worst notes, what they hate to do, what they love to do, what they're brilliant at, what they're less good at, specialities, fears. I get the feeling of how their voices function and I exploit that and live with that while writing the piece. Um, so with this piece and in, and in consultation with Julien Benhamou, um, we very quickly assembled what seems to me an ideal cast. Um, Anna Proheska, I had heard for many, many years and long admired and long wanted to collaborate with. And we met in 2020 in Berlin and we got on tremendously. And therefore it, it was, it, I felt I have to create a role for her. Martin Krimp also knew her, had heard her sing. Um, for the central character, Maria and Krebasa, well, I'd been, but close friends had told me how wonderful that she is. And then I started to listen to recordings and then we met. And again, I saw the voice was absolutely stunning. I mean, I am very specific and very picky about the type of voice I want. Yes, it is a fable yeah, and it's a fairy tale as well. Um, one of the things I like very much is that things that aren't possible, indeed the quest that underpins the whole piece, are not possible in real life. And the speed by which the, our central character travels across the score, across the landscape of the piece, also is absolutely unrealistic. And the lack of real, real authentic realism is very helpful to, for me as a composer as well. The magical is something which is, uh, I feel is full of possibilities for a composer like myself. And, um, all the same, however, uh, if we just played in fairyland across the whole piece, that would also not suit me. And one of the things that I feel Martin has given me is the fact that the, the intensity of each scene and indeed some of the things that happen uh, have a large degree of emotion in them. And the depth of feeling is something which I found useful, in, if not essential, while, while writing the piece. I love the Festival d'Aix-en-Provence. The first time I was here as a composer with original skin, it changed my life as a musician, decisively. And I have infinitely happy memories of the weeks that I sp spent preparing the rehearsals and of the performances and of the support that I was given by this wonderful festival. I am immensely happy and honored to return specifically as Pierre invited me in the 75th anniversary year. If uh, I had a, a, a word on, in this all important 75th anniversary, it was please carry on doing the same, um, presenting beautiful, powerful, vivid productions of masterpieces from the past and presenting with all the confidence and all the energy that, that the festival does pieces of, of our own day. There's, there's nothing more you could ask of, a, of an opera festival.